I think I mentioned before um, the uh, I had to do something with the clutch, the clutch hard line. Um, you can see the, uh, the the synchro the synchro line. This this flexi this flexible one here. Um, it's a lot longer than the one on the two wheel drive um, version of the vans. It comes right back to um, to near this this small this small spar or whatever you you call it chassis member that comes across there. The, um, the on a, on a two wheel drive one, the hard line, it comes right back up here. It's a good, good, um, probably about, I don't know, about eight inches or more, uh, a bit longer. So, what I had to do is I had to cut the um, cut the line down. And I've, what I've done is I've um, I've used uh, one of the uh, you can get a repair union for this specifically for these lines. So, I did that, used that for the shortening process to, to shorten everything down and um and and, and uh, connected it all up where it's meant to be uh i think i might change the um the flexible line in the future to a to a, a braided hose to an air kit quite type hose at some point because I, I did notice that the uh the banjo union on the end of this up near the, on, on a slave cylinder where it feeds into the slave cylinder um was um was a little bit loose so um yeah i don't want it ever popping off in the future so i might as well just upgrade it and 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 do another one, but um, for the moment it's gonna, it will do. Uh, it's, it's been on there long, I've been in use long enough, so I'm sure it'll be fine for a little bit longer. So um, yeah, so that's that about the clutch. That's the um, that's that bit done for the uh, for the hard line. So just turning my attention to the the, the um, all the gear selector mechanism. Uh, I've got all new um, bushes and boots and everything to go on it so I'll give it all a clean up and put them on but the thing that the problem is is you can probably I don't know if you can see it I've run out of hands here at the moment hang on a minute but you can see that the it's actually it's worn away it's been out of out of adjustment I should imagine or whatever else but it's, it's actually it wore the the, um, the aluminium of the cup away and, and it's actually fractured and broken it so anyway as luck would have it the, the two wheel drive one is exactly the same so uh, I've taken it off of the two-wheel drive linkage and I'm going to be using this one uh, just heat give it some heat push the pin out so that will be going on there so that was a that was a lucky escape with um with regards to getting hold of one of them while I'm freshening up the um the, all of the gear linkage just cleaning it off and painting it up what I'm also needing to do at the um at the gear lever end is is where the forks are is um well there's, there's normally a lot of plastic sleeve on here, shaped plastic sleeve, and on this one as well with like a little slant. Um, that was actually missing off of this one. So what I've done is I've, I've bought these, um, if you can see them, uh, these insanely expensive, uh, I should imagine you pay for the tooling, um, little inserts that go on there. I've just finished filing these down so that I've got a nice snug fit but not too tight. Um, and there's and, and, and reaming out the pinholes as well because you have like a little alloy pin or rivet that goes through there so the next thing to do now is um is to uh, is to fit these i'm obviously going to need to clean my hands up and, and 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 get a load of solvent around here get everything cleaned up and dry because what you do is you um use epoxy epoxy glue um and um and, and glue these on and then push the rivets through and give them a, a, a little a little pinch just to um just to locate them I suppose just to, to squash them down a touch and, and then hopefully it's all in there so these these fit quite nicely now uh, I won't push it all the way back down again so the next thing to do really is to um, just clean my hands up clean everything else up with solvent get it all dry uh, mix up some epoxy and get these fitted right so I've just um, I've just finished the um, those those new inserts on the new parts the end tips for the for the gear gear shift selector uh, I've they've, they've Took a little bit of fettling on, on the metal to to get them on, but um, yeah, quite pleased with them. Like I said, they're, they're pretty expensive, but I understand that's probably because of the tooling and that. And that, this is the only place I could find them, so I'm appreciative that someone actually sells them anyway. So, so yeah, so, uh, followed the instructions. Um, obviously, uh, they've been they've been glued on with. Uh, I've used um, I've used some uh, epoxy glue, which is just uh, the only bits I've let overrun a little bit is on the bottom edges there, where you can see that where it's just setting up there now. But I wiped them clean everywhere else. Uh, I, I punched in the um, the pins and, and squished them down as best as I could. I've got to be honest, with you, I was a little bit fearful of um, putting too much pressure on because I think the instructions say they're 0.3 of a millimetre too long, and I didn't want to go too far in case I um, in case I uh, cracked the. Um, the plastic nylon or whatever it is they're made of so um so they're, anyway they're, they're in there they're glued on they're pinned in 
um, and they're downside better than they were when they, um, well, it looks a lot better than it was when it came out of the, um, the donor vehicle. So, so that's that bit done. Quite pleased with that. Yeah, it looks good. On the other end of the shaft, at the rear end where it goes in the gearbox, we've got new, new boots, new bushes. It's all had a little bit of a freshen up. Um, I've pressed the, uh, pressed the gear selector back on the, um, on the end of the shaft and put the pin back in again put a little plastic cap in the end so it's all ready to go back on the on the vehicle now so um, I'm quite pleased with that too I've just got to um, sort out the um, where they join up together now there's like a little UJ coupling and there's some and I've got a new bush uh, a new bearing or bush or whatever you want to call it plastic bush to go in in that bit too so um, yeah I, I'm pleased with that good progress today so I'm just going to put them to one side because I've got some other stuff to do first but they'll be going on fairly soon I get ready to fix the um, to fit the the gear linkage to the van today. I'll just talk about these pipes here as well. Um, these these were on fitted with the gear linkage. Uh, when I first saw them, I thought they were something that someone knocked up in a in a shed or something, um, as they looked like bits of drain pipe. But what I obviously I had a look on that car, and um, I think they're just uh, they're for protection for the for the gear shafts. I don't know if it's a 16 inch synchro thing or or not because I haven't seen them I've seen some other synchros without them but um, anyway basically this is the the tail end where the um, selector mechanism joins onto the gearbox then it comes down here and you've got a wider bit where the um, the articulated um, UJ part of it has got room to move around to articulate uh, then this bit goes against the bulkhead and that bit goes against the bulkhead with the with that in the middle need more hands here at the moment but that one in the middle um, and then that goes through the not the bulkhead it's through the um the cross member that pokes through and this this smaller piece with a piece of tube and and, and this this pipe fits onto the end of there and on the end of there it's supposed to be a um like a rubber gator uh, the one this one came the one one that came with this was was just floating around on the shaft it was um it was rotten and, and falling apart and I, I think it's um I think they're no longer available so I've been had, had a read up um quite a few people use a steering gator which is what I've done now I've bought a I've ordered up a steering gator with the right dimensions um to fit on the end of their 40 mil down to just enough to go over the shaft and that'll effectively seal that front end of the um of the whole shebang up really so um so yeah, now enough about that now. Let's go and, go and fit it to the van. I just finished um, installing the gear linkage now. The, um, it's a bit fiddly getting the front front rod all the way through. It's probably a job I should have done a lot earlier. Um, but it's all connected up in, in there, all greased up. Um, I think there's a boot missing up the top there. Oh, I'm gonna need to look out. I, I, I didn't have one. And, one of them fitted on either vehicle, but I'm sure there should be a boot there. I'll have to look at that later. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the front end. Obviously, it, it, that travels off off down down the road down there, and it comes out down here, and it goes through this tube that I showed you earlier on, up to the um, the cross member or bulkhead cross member. Um, you can see there's the the gator that I was telling you about. That's a really tight fit over the over the, um, the the steering arm or steering rod selector rod so there's no way that you'll um you'll get anything in there now um so that goes into there and then comes out the other end uh you've got your um your your, your new rubber bushing in there and then it connects up to this um this uh this protector tube that runs all the way down to the back and is connected this is why i put the um one of the bash bars in um because this actually bolts up to that hang on a second so that's where that's where it bolts up to onto the bash bar carries on down there and then the linkage comes out and uh it's free to join up onto the uh onto the gearbox the selector selector shaft there so that's all that done now quite pleased about that it was a bit of a, a bit of faffing about to get it all in there um I, you see i haven't done anything with the bash bar yet i'll probably I'll, I'll, I'll contemplate what I might, I might actually, um, I might actually uh, galvanise them when I do the the front rock slider panel. But for the moment, 
they're kind of out there anyway, they're always going to get bashed, so there won't be really much point in prettying them up too much because because um, they won't stay that way for very long. So anyway, that's the, the gear linkage done now. Um, what I am quite pleased about is it, it's, uh, it's all, all, all working fairly well. Um, I just uh, I just got in the, in the van a little bit earlier, started it up, um, selected all all through the gears using the clutch and that, and got the, um, uh, the 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 rear wheels. The rear wheels are all all taken up drive. Obviously, the, there's no, not the front because there's no no prop fitted. Um, every gear worked, so um, it's a little bit sticky, but I'll, I'll, it might need a bit of adjustment at some point. But uh, but yeah, at least I can get every gear, um, which is good. It's all um, it's all ready to go now. We are enough. Next job will be the um, next job is going to be the prop shaft. So the prop shaft um, needs a new UJ. It's a little bit loose. This one a bit rattly. So I'm just taking out the um, the circlips at the moment. I've got another one ordered up, which I'm hoping is going to come tomorrow. You can see this prop shaft is um is it's a solid one all the way through. Normally they're um most of them they're all they've got a rubber donut or either either the front or back end depending on. What model it originally came with this came with a um a solid prop which is unusual i thought um because i think they only came with the 1.9 dg engine um but it is what it is um i don't know if it's going to give me any problems with regards to i'm mean, running it it shouldn't do really because i mean it's, it was on the van that the, the donor vehicle that i bought it with so other than this anyway this loose this loose uj that you can might even be out here rattling around a bit um i'll change that up and, and that's going in uh, again, I'm not going to do much with it. I'm not going to bother painting it up. Um, not for the moment, anyway. And the new UJ doesn't fit. I mean, why would it? Anyway, um, yeah, I get a bit annoyed when things like that happen. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't fit. It was basically it was too um, it was too big. Just uh, just a smidgen wouldn't go into the it wouldn't fit into the um, into the yokes. So instead of mucking about, I took it to a local engineering firm and they sourced a, they sourced another uh, a, a UJ that did fit and um and, and, and I had them fit it in there. It's uh, I just didn't have the time or the energy really to, to fap about trying to trying to find something that would um that would do the job and get it done. So much easier to pay someone else. Anyway, um that's that in there. Let's get it fitted. Uh, it's the prop shaft installed, along with the uh, the bash bars as well. Uh, there you go, front to back. Yeah, um, all fits up nicely. Also, um, up front here. Hang on a minute. Yeah, as I was saying, up front here, I've also tightened up the um, the diff mounts as well because they were all loose uh, up here on there. I'll probably shorten that off. That nut there is a bit too long. Uh, up here as well on the sides, uh, you can see it. That's there. Them either side of those, they were all loose, so that I could move the the diff backwards and forwards to get the right length for the prop to go in. Uh, so everything's all tightened up now. Yep. Yeah. Excuse my um my uh, filming. It's a bit hard to do it underneath here. It's actually the the car the van is actually on its wheels now. It's not even on the jack, so it's nice nice being able to get underneath here without having a jack on here now. Right, so that's um, that's the uh, that's the prop and the the bash bars in. One of the um, one of the perils of using using parts off of the uh, the donor vehicle is that sometimes they're not 100 percent right or or, um, or damaged. You can see here, there's the power steering pressure pipe, and it's leaking. Yeah, it's leaking. It's not a hole in it. It's um, it's uh, it's porous. You can actually watch it sweating fluid when it's when the engine's running, and it's under pressure. It's just um where the pressure's obviously the most where it goes into the restrictor. There's a restrictor built into that that's just crimped in, which obviously takes the diameter down and, and lowers the pressure. Before it goes, shoots off up to the uh, up to the front and the rack. So gonna have to do something with that. Don't know what I'm gonna do. Um. I might just see if I can get a section. It's a fairly short section with that restrictor. Or I might, you know, what I might just do is I might just um, order up a few meters of um, a Teflon air equip hose and make up make up a new new fuel uh, new um, 
power steering uh, pressure pipe and uh, measure the restrictor that's in there and build one into that somehow with some fittings. Uh, I'll have a think about it. <sighs> Pain in the ass though. Anyway, there you go. Okay, this video is getting a bit long now, but um, I think I'll just, uh, while I'm mentioning or talking about things that can go wrong when you're using the old parts off of a donor vehicle or any other vehicle, uh, I might as well tell you about this little little um, little cock up as well. Basically, the, this involves the front springs that came off of the donor vehicle. As you can see, the the van's on its wheels now, um, and, and looking pretty good actually. I think it's sitting quite nice and high. Uh, the um, when I first put it down on its wheels, I noticed that the uh, the right hand side was sitting a little bit higher than the left hand side, about 20 mil. I measured it, 20 25 mil, which is significant really. Um, after a lot of head scratching, maximum head scratching, and, and um, basically getting underneath the vehicle and, and, and checking things over, I noticed that the the, the, the right hand spring wouldn't compress when I was um, jacking the vehicle up underneath the control arm. Uh, the weight of the um, the weight of the van wasn't actually compressing the spring, and and this is the reason why. The springs that came off of the donor vehicle were different lengths, different lengths, and obviously different spring rates as well. So. Yeah, you're looking at them and you're thinking, Mark, you should have, should have noticed that. And you're probably right. Um, in my defence, I never actually stood them up and and um, and, 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 and compared them. And uh, if I had done, I clearly I wouldn't have used them. And I wouldn't have spent money on them either, getting them blasted and, and, and powder coated up. But anyway, it is what it is. So um, they, they've come off now, which is which is a another, another horrible job having to get them things on and off. And what I've done now is... I bought some standard synchro springs, violet. I think they come. They're they're they're, they're rated at violet um, synchro springs for the front. Uh, I'm using spacers on the top, 20 millimeter spacers that came off of the donor vehicle. Yes, I have I've checked them, and they are both the same size, both both 20 millimeters. And it's also got uh, 10 millimeter spacers underneath the um, the spring cups on those um, trail master shocks. So it's got a 30 millimeter lift. Um, I, I did toy with getting the idea, with the idea of getting some um, some Trailmaster front springs, which are for, for a forty millimeter lift, but they're three times um, as much as the uh, the standard spring. So it was uh, having spent as much as I have already. I'm um, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna try, I'm, I'm trying to keep the cost down. So I've used these standard ones for the time being. So yeah, a, another another lesson learned about basically. Um, Using um, <laughs> using uh, second-hand parts, whether it be you know, if a donor vehicle or anywhere else, if it's part of a pair or whatever, just uh, just just well, I will from now on always check. Oh well, anyway, you learn by doing. <laughs>